Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome back to another video today. Today, the update of the weather forecast is, uh, let's go with moist. It's moist. We had some heavy rain this morning, but I mean, it's mid morning now and it has stopped. So we're looking good. I often get asked what, uh, what food I take when I'm out on my rides. Most of the time it's something like this, a Cadbury's brunch bar. Uh, I don't like to take race food when I'm training. I like to save race food and gels and stuff just for racing. And when I'm training, I like to stick to, to real foods. So the plan for today is to do a session that I did uh, last week. It's like an over under se uh, session on, on the climbs. So it's two and a half hours in length. I'm gonna head out to a certain climb called the Ashes Beacon. It's been on the view, you've, you've heard of this climb. If you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you'll have heard of that climb a few times before. I do quite a lot of my efforts there. Uh, so I'm going to do a bit of a loop out to that climb. And then I've got two different types of intervals to do today. The first one is like a progressive uh, progressive effort. So three minute effort and at the first minute it's, it's a certain power. Then I raise it the second minute and then for the final minute raise it again. And then the second set of intervals is uh, over under threshold. So a couple minutes over threshold and then like five minutes under threshold. It's one of those sessions where like at the end of the day when you do it, like if you do it well and you get home and you're knackered, it's a satisfying session. Like you feel like you've, you've done work and you've made some progress. So yeah, that's the plan for today. Hoping that after yesterday's session, I'll have ridden uh, like my tiredness from Sunday out of my legs and we're gonna be good to go to get a quality session in the legs. Because yesterday I cried off the session and I don't wanna do that two days in a row. Let's go. Yesterday afternoon I put some new tires on because I was still using an inner tube in my front tubeless tire after I punched in Norfolk. But we're back on tubeless now with my new tires. But anyway, this morning it's the first ride on them and sometimes new tires come with like a, almost like a, a protective film over the over the rubber which when it's wet become real slippy and i don't know if these have got it on and i don't want to risk it so the first the first few miles i'm not going to be pushing on any corners because the last thing i want to do two minutes out of my house is, is come down in a corner but we're out here this morning just starting my ride it's a little bit drier than it was yesterday morning roads are starting to dry up legs feel good let's have a good session all right we've got a little bit of gopro action here uh, this 40 sign that we just went past right there, that's where I was starting my efforts. As you can see in the bottom left corner, the lap time has just reset to zero. Uh, and anyway, I thought I would show you a little bit of an onboard perspective of um, what I see and talk you through what I'm doing. So this is the first set of efforts. Um, as you can see in the top right corner, we've got the gradient there. And what you'll notice about this climb is it varies the gradient quite a lot. It's not um, consistent. I mean, that first bit is kind of consistently five or six percent, but you'll see in a minute it even goes down to negative at one stage. Um, so it's not consistent the whole way up, which makes it a little bit harder to pace your efforts because you've, you're constantly changing gear, you're in and out of the saddle, you've got that varying terrain. Um, but you know we can't change that, so let's let's just deal with the task in hand. With this effort, this first set of efforts, I was doing one minute at 380 uh, watts, which is um, kind of just like pressing, squeezing on, not not too kind of full gas. But the second the second minute is when it starts to get a little bit harder because you, you go in, you, you're raising the power. So I had to do 430 around 430. As you can see, it's up and down everywhere. That's just because the terrain is so varied. It's just hard to pace it. Um, but around 430 watts is what I'm supposed to be hitting. Um, so this is when it starts to get hard in the second minute because you've already done the first minute at 380 and you're kind of building on top of that. So you've already got that fatigue from the first minute or well not fatigue, but the first, you know, the, the tiredness, it's in, it's in your legs, you can feel it. So the idea here was to keep my cadence above like 85, 90, as you can see, I'm starting to drop now, oh, back up to 90, that'll do. Yeah, there, go on. Keep her going, go on. Oh, back down, oh, 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 no, okay. Oh okay, yeah, anyway, anyway. Um, and then I think I lied to you guys before, I think I said it was three minutes of efforts, it's actually two minutes 30. So the final 30 seconds right now, which has just started, um, was kind of out the saddle, not full gas, but I'm going pretty hard. Uh, I had to, 
average around 600 watts for the final 30 seconds but so and you know at the end of that that kind of effort it almost is full gas it's kind of out the saddle head down um pushing on as hard as i can this is like the steepest part of the climb as well where it comes to where, where i finish my effort seven percent eight percent there we do it there we there we have it two and a half minutes of two and a half minutes of pain later uh swing around go back down to the bottom do it all again all right, that is the first six, six efforts done up Ashers Beacon. And that is the first set done. I just did five more of those efforts that you just saw there. From the GoPro footage, I had six in total. Now I'm doing a 30 minute loop around the lanes. And then I'm gonna head back to the same climb and do some over, do four over under efforts. So two minutes, I mean, you, you'll see it from the GoPro, but once I've done all those four, that'll be 10, 10 times up the climb. And that'll be my session. Starting to feel it in the old legs now. Towards the end of that second set that I just did there, I'm starting to properly hurt, like properly, properly hurt. But I've had, but I've had some food and hopefully within this 30 minutes, we can recover a little bit and then we go again. Four more times and then we're done. It is still dry. Oh man, we're about to go over some cobbles. I'm gonna put the camera away. Oh dear. That was close. I nearly just died running over the cobbles with the one hand. But anyway, as I was saying, it's dry, but it's a little bit colder today. According to my Wahoo thermometer within my Wahoo computer, it says that it's 10 degrees. Anyways, eight more minutes of riding. Then it's showtime. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of onboard GoPro footage analysis with your host, Mr. Cameron Jeffers. As you saw there, guys, that was the 40 signs. That's where I start all my efforts. Um, it's kind of, it's like not the bottom of the climb. You've, you've, you've already ridden for about a minute or two, but it's, I like to think of it as the bottom of the climb. It's where the climb first properly starts, like going up. Um, so, these efforts now, this is the second set of efforts that I had to do today. I had prescribed them my training program. Um, and this, what I'm doing here basically is two minutes at 420 watts. Um, or there or thereabouts. I'm going a little bit over there, Cameron. You eager, you eager beaver. You bloody rascal. Um, but uh, anyway, 420 watts it was the average uh, that, I, that I had to stick to. Again, you know, with this varying terrain, it's it's kind of hard to do. Kind of hard to, to, to do. You're constantly out in in and out of the saddle, changing gears. Look there, on the right hand side, we're at zero percent, um, and then we go back into the climb, climb again now properly, where it climbs the rest of um, for the rest of, of of the effort. But I actually found, weirdly, I actually found these efforts easier than the first set of what I was doing. Um, so the longer ones that I was doing today were actually easier than the shorter ones, which is quite bizarre because last week I found the, the longer efforts harder, right? But but not this week. Um, so the idea of this is to kind of make your body become more resistant to fatiguing when you are over threshold, right? So we're at 420 watts, um, which is over my threshold and then instead of finishing the effort and stopping we're dropping there we go two minutes there two minutes i hit the lap button again now we've got to do four minutes at 350 watts which is just under threshold so it's about being able to ride over threshold way over threshold and then instead when you know after that effort all all my all your body wants to do is stop and rest and recover your legs are hurting you're breathing heavy your heart rate's high all you want to do is stop but it's forcing your body to keep riding at, at power and to keep being able to ride at power, which is quite, a, a, you know, it's quite a hard skill to be able to do. So, for example, where this would come in beneficial in a real life racing scenario would be in a in in a race. For example, okay, I'm in a race. There's a, there's a climb in the race. It's two minutes long. I attack on the climb, so I ride at, at 4, 420, 440, 450 watts up this climb, attacking, attacking the bunch that I'm in. And then when I get to the top of the climb, because I've trained in such a certain way, like, like right what I'm doing right now, 
I'm able to continue, I'm, I'm able to bring my power down a little bit, but also continue that hard effort over the top of the climb, right? So it's, it's you know, it, it, as opposed to just attacking up the climb and hopefully getting a gap and then sitting up and recovering and then going again, it's been able to con continue going, been able to bring the power down a little bit and recover at threat, like recover just below threshold, but keep on the gas and keep on the power. Then you can increase your gap uh, and form a breakaway or, or, or win a race or whatever you know, whatever the case may be. It's just it's just a great uh, kind of not skill, but a great um, what is the quote? Something like great ammo in your arsenal. Great arsenal in your ammo. No, I don't know. Whatever whatever that quote may be. Um, so so yeah, it's a it's a weird one. It's like your legs are hurting, but it's a manageable pain, and it's a kind of what it's a kind of pain where it goes away with cadence. You know, with cadence comes power. So the the goal here for me, as you can see, my cadence in this second half of the effort has been, you know, well over ninety. It drops down there, go around the left hand, go around the left hand bend, and then start to climb again. But my cadence has been, uh, you know, well over 90 for, for the, I mean, as I say that, it's down at 72. What are you playing at, Cam? Practice what you preach. Here we go. Oh, there we go. 90. There we go. Back up to 90. Um, so it's at 90. And I just found it was easier to hold like 350 watts at cadence. You know, you don't fatigue. When you're pedaling at a higher cadence, you're using your aerobic system over your anaerobic system. You know, you're using your heart, you're using glycogen stores, you're not, you're not, you're not running down, you're not ripping muscle fibers by pedaling at a low cadence. It's always better to pedal at a higher cadence when you're doing power. You can just, you can ride for a longer period of time. It's just, you just can't, you just can't. So, um, here we go, steepest part of the climb, 10% we peaked out there. Don't know if you caught that. But uh, as you can see from that little graph there on the left hand side, or the right hand side, but to the left of the elevation, um, we're right near the end of the climb, or not the end of the climb, but the end of the effort. Um, I quite like the end of an effort being on a steep climb because it's just, you know, you, you really can just get the power out. It's easier, I always find it's easier to hold power on a climb. So when it kicks up at the end, um, and, and especially when you're knackered as well, um, it can really make things easier or feel like seem easier. But boom, there we go, four minutes. Four minutes, easy as that. Thanks for coming. We got a swing around now. Head back down to the bottom of the climb. Um, and then repeat that effort three more times. That's 10 times up this climb today. 10 times. Oh my God, they were so hard. <laughs> I finished the effort like 10 minutes ago and I'm still, I feel like I'm just gonna blow. Look, I went that hard, my camera even steamed. What is going on here? You can't see me. I feel like this ride home, I'm limited to about 100 watts max. 100 watts max. But that is two and a half hours. The session's done. I am about a 10 minute ride away from home. I would have liked to have like, gone for a bit longer and rounded up to three for the day. But unfortunately, I've got to get home because I've got to make an important call, which isn't for the vlog. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Feel pretty satisfied. Feel pretty satisfied after that. We got a good session in. Uh, it was, I mean, the shorter efforts today hurt more than the longer efforts, bizarrely. But it's just that progressive effort, just uh, like it just takes it out, like it just saps you of energy. But yeah, regardless, we hit all the numbers, we got the session done, we got the efforts done. Good day on the bike. Got a couple more days of riding, one one more hard ride ahead of the tour of the Mendips this Sunday, and then next weekend is the two day, and that is the tour of the reservoir. Two uh, two rounds of the national series, so. A few big a few big weeks ahead of us so i've got to make sure i'm in top condition anyway it is time to stop rambling and to home we go so i was just about to get a protein uh recovery drink after training and i just completely realized that we have run out run out of protein powder i am expecting another uh, another big box of this recovery powder but it's not going to arrive until tomorrow and i want something today because i've just got back from a hard ride and i need my protein so what i'm going to do is show you guys a little bit of a I wouldn't say it's a trick or a tip. Maybe it's a t maybe it's a tip. If you find yourself in the same situation, I mean, you, I can just drink, uh, do it the old school way, and drink a glass of milk to get some get a nice little protein hit post training, or 
you can do this. Step one, drive to your local supermarket. Step two, buy a milkshake from said supermarket. Me personally, I like to go for the fridge strawberry flavor. Now, the thing with these are, it says here, High in protein, and if we actually look at the protein stats, it is uh, 400 milligrams. So per bottle, we have how many grams of protein? Like 15? Around 15 grams of protein. It is recommended that after exercise, you have around 30 grams of protein. So it's almost like a cheap sugary alternative to a protein shake. Shut up, Siri. It's not ideal, but it works. Plus, a strawberry milkshake tastes nicer than a protein shake anyway. Also, I just want to highlight, I'm not vegan, uh, and I do understand that, it, that there is different ways to get your protein hit. For example, soya protein and pea protein. This is just what works for me, so I thought I would pass on the wisdom. Throw a fit, throw a fit, and I'll leave you alone.